This is a very great day today. I don't know if you feel it, but I certainly do. It's a great day. The spirit is alive and well here. The future is bright. The present is absolutely fantastic. So without any further ado, the champion, my brother, my friend, your brother, your friend, Muhammad Ali. My field was boxing. In boxing, Allah blessed me to be the best in boxing. And whenever I would fight, I was what they called the main event. I was last, and the preliminaries fought first. Now I'm not boxing. I'm on the roster with other heavyweights who are much greater than I am in this field. So tonight, I'm a preliminary. <laughs> and I recognize that. So I want to say thank you for coming. May Allah bless you. I'm going to be short. I'm just a preliminary here. And I come to listen to my leading teacher. <laughs> say I'm great, they talk about how good I am and how they praise it on me, but I'm nothing but a little boy to my leading teacher. And I recognize that. And I'm honored to be sitting here beside him. I'm actually nervous sitting beside him. Not because he'll beat me up, but because if his knowledge I might make the wrong move and he might spank me. <laughs> so, uh, God bless all of you. I'm here to listen and I'm waiting for him and I want you to listen to him. Where his words compare with your past preachers, compare with your TV evangelists, compare with all your Billy Graham, Jimmy Swaggarts, <laughs> all your wise leaders, all your Whoever you know that you think is wise, <laughs> just listen to him and we, if you got any kind of common sense, you'll say he's my man too. So. <laughs> Dear people, Muslims, peace be unto you. Assalamu alaikum. Praise be to Allah, the one Lord and Creator. And peace and blessings be upon the last and universal prophet and messenger of God, Muhammad. And I intend all the best salutations that would follow. <clears throat> Before speaking on briefly on the role of the mosque or the role of the, the uh, Masjid, it's an Arabic term, a Quranic term, Masjid. I first want to uh, acknowledge the greatly appreciated contribution to the correct propagation of the religion and the correct image of Muslims from my brother in Al Islam and my brother from my mother and father, Brother Jabber Muhammad. <laughs> and 
and we pray that Allah bless him to again in the very near future <clears throat> schedule another program like this. We need more of these programs. It is indeed an honor and I'm greatly honored to be on this program today with Dr. Abdul Rahman, professor at Chicago University, and <clears throat> with uh, a man that I love from the very first time I met him, Abdul Salam Rosie. I expected also <clears throat> to meet here today our brother and friend, Dr. Naeem Akbar. So if any of you meet him, you tell him that I missed him again. I was in Denver, Colorado about uh, three weeks ago, and he was scheduled to be on that program. And I missed him there. So here I am in Chicago, and I'm missing him here. I hope to see him one day on a program with me. <laughs> on a program where we are sharing. <clears throat> what has been said of, of our religion, and uh, <clears throat> when I say our religion, I hope you have not forgotten what Dr. Abdul Rahman said, and that is that Islam, the religion of everything created. And he mentioned two levels of Islam. One on the natural level, in the nature that God made, created. And the next level is the revealed level, the Quran and the life of Muslims who follow Quran. <clears throat> what he has said of the religion must also be associated or applied to the mosque. I won't speak on the mosque or the masjid as, uh, <clears throat> as uh, a function, uh, a, re a religious function, but uh, the mosque has an influence. Uh, we all understand the I believe the functions of a mosque, uh, that is a place of prayer, a place for lectures on the religion, uh, a place for men to come together under one God and hear the teachings, the last, the teachings of the last revealed book, the Quran and the teachings of the prophet, the messenger of that book, Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, and learn how to live that life and to follow it as it was demonstrated in the life of Muhammad the prophet, peace and blessings be on him. <clears throat> I'm sure we understand that. Most of us understand that. And we understand that the mosque is also a place for education. Islam is education. Islam is religion. Islam is education. Islam is science. Islam is comprehensive and inclusive, as the speaker uh, has already said. <clears throat> so I believe we understand the role of the mosque, the function of a mosque in that, in, that, in that light. I want to speak very briefly on the role of the mosque in terms of the influence that the mosque should send out from its, out from its environment, out from its environment, into the neighboring environment as far as that influence can, can go. That influence for an Islamic society, uh, uh, imagine now that we will, we're living in an Islamic country, that America is an Islamic country. There are Muslims here in, in, the, uh, in the 90 percent or, or better, as in many uh, Muslim lands, many Muslim countries. Then the role of the mosque, <coughs> mosque uh, the, uh, the role of the influence of the mosque would be the same, but not as important as it is for us in an environment like America where the great majority are non-Muslims. So I have to put 
emphasis where maybe those emphasis wouldn't be put if we were a mosque in a Muslim nation or Muslim society. As Muslims, we should be concerned to have the purity of our religion ring out as far as it can ring in America. The purity of our religion. Uh, if, if we were in an Islamic country, maybe we would be concentrating on the problems, the economic problems, or political problems, maybe. But you know how, <laughs> how difficult that is in the world of today to uh, uh, address problems of that nature, even in so-called Islamic societies or so-called Islamic nations. Uh, perhaps we'll be addressing the, 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 the school, the problem for the local school, or um, the, the relations, uh, the family relations, etc., which are all good and expected to be addressed in a mosque. <clears throat> but here in America, here in America, we are a new growing population, a new growing population we are still burdened with the responsibility to correctly introduce ourselves. We are burdened with the responsibility also to correctly, to correctly communicate the religion, the essentials of our religion. For me, Tawheed, which is the oneness, oneness or unity, or unity, Tawheed, unity in our religion, is most important, most important. We have to let the American people know, our neighbors know, that idea of Tawheed. It begins, as the speakers have already said of our religion, it begins with the idea that there's only one God, the belief that there's only one God. There's no God for blacks and a God for white, whites. There's no God for Jews and a God for somebody else. There's only one God, the God for us all. So we all have equal access to him. He created us all, we are all equal, equally his dependents. We are all equally loved by him. So that is the religion. That is the religion. And that is the oneness. One God, one God. One God and one, one God and one humanity. We are no two separate creations. There's no mytho mythology for the creation of the white race and a mythology for the creation of the black race or for other, other races, there is only one creation of man, and that's the creation that God made. God created man. And I won't, don't want to go over all of that, but this is the influence. This is influence that should come out from the mosque in this American society, and that we truly believe in one God, and that oneness is all comprehensive, is total, is comprehensive, that oneness goes from God to the oneness of his creation. This universe is one. This is the uh, teachings of our holy book. This is the teachings of our prophet, peace and blessings be on him. The universe is one. The creation is one. <clears throat> there are no different creations out there. This is one creation. Whether it's the Milky Way, Milky Way galaxy or other galaxies or galaxies yet to be discovered by the uh, telescope and the scientist, the, the astronomer, no matter how rare it is or how far it is away or when it will be discovered, when it's discovered, it will be part of this same world, part of this same matter, part of this same cosmic order, the order created by that one Lord and God we call in Al-Islam, we call as Muslim Allah, Allah. And that should be understood. When that is understood, that is a power of peace. Oneness, the oneness, the most important concept for Muslim is oneness. Tawheed, oneness, that is the most powerful message of peace. Peace, peace. How come families can live together? Because they believe they are one family. How come they enjoy peace and love and harmony? Because they believe they are one family. When they start to divide themselves, start to choose each other over each other, and start to, to ex, ex, uh, 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 exclude each other, then the peace is lost. But as long as they see the unity, and see all sharing in the unity of that family and all having equal rights and equal access to whatever that family has to offer, there is peace and there is unity. So our Tawheed is the message of unity. Tawheed, oneness, is the message of unity. It is the message of peace. The message of peace. And that's what should ring out from the mosque as an influence. When it rings out, whether 
whether it's the Jew that hears it or a Christian that hears it or some other. He, he will be hearing the best you have to offer. He will be hearing the best you have to offer. I can't think of anything better to win a Jew over to me than Tawheed. I can't think of anything better to win the Christian over to me than Tawheed. The all but the Christians believe in three gods. Uh, you finish it, three gods in one. So they will have their way of communicating their concept of God, but they will appreciate Tawheed from us. Yes. So uh, uh, in terms of influence, the role of the mosque should be to lift up the concept of Tawheed and let it ring out over America. That should be the role of the mosque in the United States. That's the most important thing. Then secondly, the role of the mosque should be to attend the serious, the serious, the most serious needs of the community. The most serious needs of the community. Whether those needs be economic, spiritual, spiritual, moral, economic, political, whatever they are. The role of the mosque should be to attend those needs. No matter how meager its resources, it still should accept the responsibility to attend those needs. If we are poor and financially, we should accept the responsibility to attend the economic needs of our people in our community. Though we have no money. Accepting that responsibility will be an influence to move us to get some money. Again, whether it be political concern, spiritual concern, economic concern, no matter what it is, the role of a mosque in the community is to register those concerns, to take serious those concerns, to address those concerns, to attend those needs. That is what I had to say to you in a capsule. I have much this more to say to you later. <clears throat> the role of the mosque in America has to also accept responsibility for correcting the lies that have been told by enemies to misrepresent the Quran, our prophet Muhammad, even our God and the lies that are, that, are, that are being told even now by enemies of our religion, enemies of our prophet, enemies of God. No enemy of Allah is not an enemy of Jesus Christ. You cannot be an enemy of Allah and not be also an enemy of Jesus Christ and Moses and Jehovah. Yes, so we have to address also these lies that have been told and, and, and in some de small degree are continuing. We have to address those lies. <laughs> Today, a great lie was addressed. And I hope that we will have women like uh, uh, Attorney Ming to address the lies concerning the, 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 the place of women in Muslim society. I hope we'll have more of that coming. But there are many other lies that we accept and many of us can't resist accepting the lies. I, I'm, I'm surprised to say this, I'm surprised to, to, to know this and, and feel a little embarrassed to say this, but I have met Muslims who also contribute to the lies, uh, even by silence with their silence, when they should be speaking up, or with ignorance or weakness, I don't know. You know, the words of a, of a man that America knows well in, its, in the history of, uh, of, uh, of liberty, uh, our humanity, humanitarian uh, uh, um, uh, works from the movement in Europe. His name is uh, Rousseau, John Jacques Rousseau. He's, he's uh, given as saying that what is keenly desired 
is painfully difficult to disbelieve. Now, men desire water so badly on the desert that they see water on the sand where there's no water. I'm sure you've been, you, you men my age and older, you've been young, like I was. And you see a beautiful girl, and you say to yourself, she's for me. <laughs> and no matter what other people may say, you're just seeing her. Someone who knows it, say, no, she's not for you. But if this feeling is strong enough, you won't hear that. She's for me. Then maybe she's for Bushman. <laughs> but at that time, you say she's for me. She's for me. I got to have that girl. Well, appetite is something else, you know. And in America, most of us have a strong appetite for America's corruption. No matter whether we're church people, Mosque people, uh, uh, synagogue people, no matter what, where we belong, atheists, no matter where we are, most of us in America, we have an appetite for this corruption. And so, so the, first, the first thing we have to have is the mercy and blessing of God to make us reduce this appetite, to help us reduce this appetite for wrong, for lies, for wrong, for weaknesses, for sin for corruption, then we can disbelieve in the bad side and be more in a situation to believe in the good side. Yes, huh? Yes. So really if we are aware of the extent of corruption in a free society like America, America has a peculiar and unique freedom. In this kind of society, if we are aware of the degree and uh, our, our, our extent to which corruption affects the lives of people who want to be human, then we all should first start by asking God's forgiveness for our personal sins and turning to him and begging his mercy so we'll get in a mental situation and in a moral situation and in a spiritual situation to see straight. Then when we can see straight, we will make the proper choice. And I guarantee you, you'll choose the Quran you choose Muhammad, you choose Islam. Assalamu alaikum.